Hey girls, we're gonna go through home parties. Um, I pride myself on being an online partier. Um, I just don't wanna give up my evenings with my toddlers and my husband, uh, cause I'm kinda stingy like that. Uh, so online parties have worked great. They fit in the nooks and the crannies of my life. Um, but I've recently started to do a few more home parties and got a pretty good system down um, and they are super fun. So if you get the chance to do them, don't be afraid. Uh, I'm going to walk you through how I do my home parties. All right, so one secret to home parties is you do not want to make 15 trips to your car. That's going to tell any guests or even your hostess um, that this is kind of a cumbersome job that you need a whole lot of supplies that she doesn't personally have. Um, and basically it just makes your job look harder than it is. So your goal is to come in um, in one load if possible. Um, and so usually the way I do that is I load up my Danbury bag right there, which I've already unloaded, sorry. Um, I load it up full and it fits all this stuff on the table, including the tablecloth and all those mini heaters that you see down there on the floor. Um, everything except for these bags, which um, I can, they're very, very light. They have barely anything in them. I can hold all of those with one hand and carry my jam bag on my other shoulder and bam, we are loaded in one trip. Um, if your hostess does not have a table, most of them do, they'll use your kitchen table or, or a coffee table or something. If they don't, then you might want to invest in a tiny little card table like this. This isn't even a card table. It's half the size of a card table, it's very little. Um, and there you go, you have maybe two trips. You might have been able to hold that in your other hand in the one trip in. So that is my first piece of advice. When it comes to setting up your party, this is what I put in every place setting um, where a guest is going to be sitting. So they'll have a pen and a catalog. And then if you open that up, every one of them has an information card. These are so important. You need to get their contact information else they just visited your party and heard your pitch and your sales and uh, your booking um, pitch as well and walked out the door and you have no way to get a hold of them. So make sure you collect these um, from your guests. They will also receive a host join brochure because you don't know when they're coming in and just socializing. They may just sit down and browse through that and then an order form because we want them to order, right? All right, so I will put that in everyone's Spot on the right, table. next two areas I will have set up. Um, this one will be in a very common um, area. If you're sitting around the coffee table, put this in the middle of the coffee table. This is everyone is going to come by and visit this area at some time. If you want to do two of these, if you have enough product to do that, then do so. But if not, one will be fine. Um, after we finish our entire presentation, we're going to start samples, and so this is where they would go. Um, I'm going to walk you through when they get their sample and everything in a minute, but just know that when you first set up, you want a station set up like this. Um, it's going to have our cleanser. Listen, I'm a firm believer in the Dawn dish soap method, especially for little girls, but our cleanser is pretty much the bomb.com. So use our products. If they work, use them. Um, so use the cleanser. Um, and show them that that is a very, very important part of the Jamberry process because prep is key to a good application. Um, have them come clean their nails, buff, and then take an alcohol wipe with right, them. The next station I will have set up is, um, and I will try to have several of these set up around the room just because I do have several mini heaters I can use. Um, and it's better that they don't all have to wait turns. So I will put um, a pair of scissors, um, some cheap little nail files. I do, if you can afford just to have Danbury nail files, then do it. But I do understand the for one time use, unless you're going to let your customers take them home, which is not a bad idea. Um, so they're going to cut their sample in half. They're going to heat it up around the mini heaters located around the room um, and use a cuticle pusher to press it on and then they can file off the excess, or I am a clipper, so I always provide clippers for those who want to be like me. Um, and then I also provide, dun dun dun, my nail spoon. Uh, this thing, is not gonna collect germs. You can sterilize it very easily with alcohol, so it's totally okay that you let customers use it. Uh, and this is one that I got from Sally, so it's pretty, uh, a pretty good quality. I can't wait for Jim Berry to come out with nail spoons. Hint, hint, home office. Um, 
So anyway, I allow them to do that because when I show my application technique, I do include the nail spoon. So, and lastly, the other station I have set up is, this is right when they come in. So right when they come in, I will walk you through what you're going to be doing at that point. Um, and one of those things is you're going to point them to this station immediately. This is name tags, which I just really just have tiny little labels because those big bulky name tags are just awkward. So little uh, name tags because you want your hostess or anyone else there to know um, that this kind of party is easy to run. You don't have to remember names. They're going to wear name tags. Um, so that's a little subliminal message you can send to people who might want to do your job. Um, I also put our lacquer remover out for anyone who has lacquer on their nails um, or even old jams that need to be removed. And I ask them to go ahead and do that um, while we're kind of waiting for the party to start. I ask them then to browse through the samples and pick one and just hold on to it until we're ready to apply. And then usually I'll give my hostess this job. I will give her a roll of tickets and I'll say everyone who comes in the door, give them a ticket um, for a door prize. And then later on throughout the party, I'll be giving away a ton of these tickets and sometimes I make that, I designate one of the party guests to be the ticket giver if I feel like, you know, I don't want to be running around during the party or my hostess or, you know, somebody. All right, so All right. now that we have our party set up, this is where your job starts. You need to have that set up before guests arrive. I know that's hard. I am like habitual late woman here, so I know, but it is crucial that you are free when the guests arrive because you need to make yourself available right here. The door. When people start ringing that doorbell, you need to be the one that greets them. You need to be like, oh, what's your name? This is your chance to gain rapport with those guests. You are um, asking them questions about themselves. You are pointing them toward our, um, our name tag station that I just um, showed you. So um, this is also your chance to observe your guests and to see maybe what their strengths are and point those out to them. So if... Susie is bringing a fruit tray. This is your chance to be like, oh my goodness, you are the most helpful friend. Sally is so lucky to have you. Thank you so much for bringing that. Right there, you just let her know like, this is a quality you already possess. I didn't tell you to do this. You did it on your own. And later on, we're gonna revisit those strengths that we, we pick out in each person and, and relate it to how it would help them be successful in Jamberry. All right, so now that we have welcomed our guests, we've gained rapport, um, asking them questions about themselves, pointing out their strengths. We um, pointed them to our name tag station. They've removed their lacquer. They've chosen their sample. And the hostess has given them a ticket. And everyone's kind of just milling around. You can ask everyone to find a seat. Um, and at their seat should be that catalog and brochure and information form and a pen and all that good stuff that I showed you earlier. Um, and just, they'll just put that in their laps usually. And then this is when you will start your presentation. Now, I like to use um, party cards. Now, I know that there are people out there who sell party cards for direct sale parties. I have never purchased any party cards. So basically what I have done is I've created my own by watching other people at parties um, and just taking the pieces that I liked um, and throwing some away and adding some. So. I in no way want to steal anyone's ideas, um, and mine are probably not as high as quality as the ones you can buy, and they probably have all this subliminal messaging in it that mine don't have. So, hey, this is just how I do it. Like I said, I'm just now um, really even wanting to do home parties. So, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. So, what I will do is, um, like I said, this is a very simplistic setup. I love decoration. So this is hard for me, okay? But it is worth it because you want to show your guests and your hostess that it can be simple and beautiful in its own little simplistic way. Um, so what I will do is once I have guests sitting down, I will hand them bags. Now I have eight. I think most party cards that you can buy have like 10. Um, so I only have eight. So I'll pick eight guests and I will give each guest a bag. And so this is number one. I will hand out all these bags. So my, my table just got even more simplistic because all these bags are gone. Um, and so I'll keep them up here for the purpose of showing you um, how we go through them and I'll pretend like I'm a guest opening the bags. All right, so my first piece of advice before you start um, going through these bags is to remind yourself not to overcomplicate things or not to over talk because it will take you a little while to go through all these bags and hit all the points you wanna hit. So if you over talk, your party guests are gonna get really tired of doing this. 
I mean, like I said, I only have eight bags, so some people have ten to get through. So I would say, all right, guys, you know, I would introduce myself um, and try to keep that kind of short and sweet because they don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> um, so I would start and say, you guys, I want to invite you to watch me run this party. And at the end of the party, I'm going to give you a chance to, to uh, consider looking into what I do and picturing yourself in that role. And so watch how easy this is. And I believe anyone can do it with any personality. Um, and then kind of keep that in the back of the, your mind while we're partying. So I would say, okay, who has bag number one? And bag number one, they all look at their bags, and bag number one finds hers. And I say, okay, can you pull out the card that's in your bag? She pulls out the card, and I say, all right, read the card. It says number one, real big. And it says, star of the show, ask the hostess about her wish list. And so this is basically what I would say. All right, guys, who's the star of our show? And they would all say, it's Sally. And I'd say, Sally, come on up here. And Sally would come up here, and I would squeeze her shoulder, and I would say, hey, Sally, you are so awesome for doing this party. Girls, she made this food or whatever she did. She cleaned her house. She invited us in for an hour, and my business could not run without people like her. So I really, really appreciate her. She is amazing. So what I want to take a minute to do is I want to go around really quickly, say your name, tell me how you know Sally, and what's one thing you love about her. And as they go around saying this, um, you're going to start to see some of them perk up a little bit and start to turn the wheels in their heads and think, I want to be the star of the show. I want my friends to tell me why they love me. Uh, uh, so this is actually a very good big booking technique because you are just appealing to all of your guests saying, uh, this can be you. So you're not even asking them for a booking at this point, but you kind of dote on your hostess a little bit. And then you say, all right, hostess, what is your wish list at the top of your wish list um, from the Jamberry catalog? And let her say whatever it is that she wants. And then you challenge the guests. All right, girls, we're going to get that for Sally. We're going to get that. We're going to need this many sales. If you can do that math on the top of your head, let's do it. All right. And so Sally goes and sits down. Well, then you tell, okay, bag number one, there's still something else in your bag, right? Can you pull out what's in your bag? And so she will pull out a product. And it really doesn't matter. I don't go any rhyme or reason to the order of my product, although there probably is a very good rhyme and reason. I just don't use it. All right. So. She pulls out a mini heater, and everybody looks at it, and I say, all right, our mini heater. And I tell them all about the mini heater, why it is great. And I watched a video of CJ Summers, who's way up there in January. And one thing she did that has been a big hit at all of my parties is she pulled out a blow dryer at this point, and she plugged it in, and she said, y'all, you can totally use this blow dryer. You can... Uh, you know, get your wrap and you can turn it on and it's really loud, y'all. It's really loud on video and it's really loud in person. Um, heat up your wrap, turn it off, put it down, and then she says, and then turn it back on again. She turns it on, put on another wrap, put it down, and then pick it up and turn it back on again. And at this point, your guests are getting annoyed with this off and on loud blowing sound. Uh, and I think at that point she said, and my husband is in the background going, oh my gosh, turn that off. Um, and people can see how you can use that option, but there is a much better way. And then you plug in this baby and show them. You can't even hear it, guys. You cannot even hear it. It is so quiet. And then on top of that, it's the perfect amount of heat, the perfect amount of wind. It's got the velvet cover on the vent here. So your little ones, even if they touch it, they're not going to get burnt. Or should I say yourself? <laughs> even if I touch it, I'm not going to get burned. So I tell them about the mini heater. Oh. All right, and then I say, okay, bag number two, and bag number two picks up her bag, and she reads her card, and her card says something about this being girl time, and so I talk about how um, if you have your own party, this is time that you deserve away, so stop thinking about whatever you're thinking about, and just have a little fun with us girls while we're here, um, and then her product is the application kit, and I open it up and go through the contents as quickly as I can. Uh, number three. Uh, talks about all the different ways that they can do a party. So you can tell them 
Listen, I do a lot of online parties. I can come to your office. I can come um, to, you know, you on your lunch break anywhere. I can do nighttime parties. I can do play date parties. I can do mommy and me parties. Any kind of party that you're willing to do, hey, throw it out there and let them know. Because they may not even be thinking, they may think, I don't have an evening free. Well, if you just let them know about online parties, they may be all for that. And then the product would be um, the wraps themselves. We talk about gender nail wraps and how wonderful they are and maybe why you loved them. Um, I'm not going to go through all these bags for the sake of the long video, but I will, um, for my girls and my team, I will post a list of what my party cards say. And again, there are probably better versions that you can buy out there. Um, but let me show you the products that I show in the parties. Um, so that next bag had um, our cuticle remover pin. And I talk about how amazing that is for prepping your nails. And I tell them about invisible cuticles. Almost none of my party guests know what an invisible cuticle is. So this really helps to even explain to them why they are getting bubbling on the edges of their wraps the next day. It's because they have an invisible cuticle. So I tell them how amazing this is. I talk about our nail cleanser and how it will remove excess oil and really clean their nails, prep them really well before they apply the wraps. I'll talk about our cuticle oil and the oil pen. This is kind of like the extras bag. And then I'll also touch on our nail lacquer, which y'all, I am so flipping in love with. If you have not done the lacquer, I thought since it had no acetone that it was kind of going to be weak. And it is amazing. So, um, yeah, I'm going to use that from now on to remove my wraps because it works better than oil. And it's got like a conditioner in it. So when it coats your nails, it really um, helps them to stay healthy. On that note, make sure they don't just use a lacquer remover and feel like their nails are clean and prepped because it has a conditioner in it. I just said that, and that will not let your wraps stick. You need to clean it off and dry those uh, nails out before you apply more jam. So that's where the cleanser comes in um, and the alcohol wipes. So I'll talk about those. My next box is Style Box, so I'll show them the latest Style Box and what was in it. I always try to keep my latest Style Box together, like I don't use it until I get the next one, so that I always have one on hand for um, my home parties or anything like that to show. Um, and then the next one would be Indulgence. So I showed them that whole set, I'm not going to open it up here, and tell them um, kind of how it relates to the, the health of their hands. But, uh, next, I have our lacquer. And y'all, let me just tell you, I'm a jam lover, and so I swore off all polish once I discovered jam. But our new lacquer line has really got me intrigued. And so I, I've ordered a lot, and I actually have been using it on my toes a lot. And even for an accent nail here or there, I still love my jams the most ever. But um, our lacquer is legit, y'all. Like, I love a company that actually sells good products. It is a one coat lacquer. It is five free of the top chemicals that most polishes have. Uh, it dries super fast. Um, and at this point is when I also will plug our base coat and our top coat. So I will let them know, like, look, you can just use the lacquer. But if you want the best, the best longest lasting application, you need to use our base coat, either the strengthening base coat, if you have weak nails, or the smoothing base coat. Um, choose one of the lacquers. You can even use the design dimensions. And I have all this out for them to try. When they put on their sample in a minute, I'm gonna invite them to use any of these for their other nails on their hands. And then I will also show them that we have a ultra shine top coat or a matte top coat. They could use either of those. Um, and then I also have these little lacquer sticks that have all of our lacquers on them, and it shows what each would look like, and they're labeled, because it's kind of hard to tell in a bottle. So um, I suggest you can buy these at Sally's, I believe. I actually ordered these from another jam consultant, um, but you can buy them at Sally's and just paint them, but you'd have to have all the lacquers, of course. Anyway. All righty. So that is all about our lacquers, and then... My last one I plug is the Jam Juniors. And so I just want to let them know that there is such a thing. And let them see a sheet because they don't always understand what it means when you say there's two different designs on one sheet. There's more wraps to choose from um, their little fingers. So you can get more applications out of this sheet than you can an adult sheet for your little ones. 
Um, and then I always let them know that that's recommended for age two to eight, I believe, but there's, it all depends on the size of your nails. So if you have a seven-year-old that has like, you know, man hands, sorry, seven-year-old with man hands, um, she probably needs to get the adult wraps. But if you have an 11 year old with very dainty small hands, then she can probably use the juniors. And a lot of people um, will get kind of bummed when they're like, oh man, my, my nails are too big for these small wraps, but they're too uh, small for the biggest wraps on the adult sheet. Well, I just ease their fears and let them know, hey, all that means is that you're in a sweet spot where you can choose junior wraps and use these, or you can choose adult wraps and use the bottom half of those you have that many more designs to choose from that other people are limited on. So even though you feel like you're wasting part of a sheet, um, number one, you can probably find somebody to give that to, but number two, you just got the ability to use um, that many more designs. Um, so anyway, that's a plus. All right, I do want to touch on some of those cards that I skipped looking at. Um, I want you to know kind of what they mean when I, when I give you the list. Um, and so, so one of them says, go on a shopping spree. And so basically what I do then is I call my hostess back up and I say, hey, um, so we're going to pretend like this is the average home party and the average home party is $400. And so if this were the average home party, let's just go on a shopping spree. Let's say, and so what, what your hostess would, would earn on a $400 party is one free sheet of nail wraps, $80 in free product five half off items, um, three exclusive, hostess exclusive wraps, three months free shipping, and then on top of that, 30% off anything else she wants. So this is what you want to do visually. You want to stand her up there and say, okay, you got a free sheet of wraps, and you want to put a free sheet of wraps in her hands. And then you want to say, oh, you got three hostess exclusive wraps too, so give her those three more wraps, and then say, Oh, okay, so you have $80 in product credit. That's a mini heater and an application kit with the nail oil. And that's this, uh, the cuticle remover, the blah, blah, blah. You add up $80 in product and you make her hold all of that. And at this point, it's, you know, falling over on her. Uh, on top of that, is there anything else you want for half off? Oh, this is half off. This is half off. This is half five of them. Five different half off items. People usually like to choose the biggest items for half off. Mini heaters and, um, application kits and that kind of stuff. So give her all that. And again, her arms are getting more and more full and then throw in there. Yeah. You also got three months free shipping for anything else you want and 30% off anything else you want to order with this hostess order. And what that does is it visualizes to her friends. All we did was come and have fun and hang out and she's going to get to go home with all this stuff. So it is a great, um, booking technique. Um, at one point, you're going to pull out the card that says live your dreams. And so what this is, it's talking about um, the amount of freedom and burden lifting that the January opportunity can give them. And so you would go around the room and you would say, hey, Johnny Fay or whoever. Um, if you, I'm picking really Alabama names, y'all. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so what would you do with a hundred dollars, an extra hundred dollars, or not a hundred, a thousand dollars, um, a year. And so, oh no, a month, I'm sorry, a month. And so they'd go around and they'd be like, oh, I don't know, extra thousand dollars a month, I could probably take on another car payment or I could probably just pay off my credit card debt or, you know, they'll give you all of these ideas. And then you say, okay, you get about two or three people in and you stop and you say, okay, what would you do with an extra thousand dollars a week? And then she's like, wow, okay, that's hard to even put my, wrap my mind around. $1,000 a week, that'd be like $4,000 a month? Like, wow, okay. And they start giving you some ideas and it starts to get hard for them. And then you stop and you say, okay, what would you do with an extra $1,000 a day? And they, that just blows their mind. They just cannot even go there. You'll just start seeing giggling <laughs> because it's such a stupid, ridiculous amount of money. And then you let them know that we have people in our company making all of those. Um, and if you have worked your way up, um, like I know it gives me pure joy to be able to tell them which one of those I'm in. And they're like, really? Wow. Okay. Um, and then people who are, you know, that I personally know and love who are actually making a thousand dollars a day. I'm not quite there, but I'm going to get there. Um, so that is just, yeah, mind boggling and it happens 
all the time. Right. Also, during the live your dreams part of the party, you want to open up a question and answer session. So you want to say, look, at this point in the party, ask me anything. But you don't want to just stop right there and say, ask me anything, because you are going to hear crickets. You have to give them starter questions. Like, for instance, you can ask me how much it costs to get started, or how I earned the trip to Cancun this year, or anything at all. Um, so you give them those questions, and then guess what? The first person to raise their hand usually asks you one of those questions. And so, all right, when I'm about halfway through my bag, when I've done four of them, four or five, then I will stop and I'll say, okay, let's take a break. I want to play a game. Um, and so basically all this game is is that each of you are going to roll the dice. You're going to roll the dice, and whatever number you roll, I'm going to give you an envelope that corresponds with that number. So, I have my envelopes here, and I use the Jamberry Little Gifts um, envelopes because they're pretty. Um, and so, I will hand the first person the dice, and I'll say, okay, roll, and just see what you get. And she'll roll, and it will be four and so I'll find envelope number four and I'll give it to her. And I will let them know that in each of these envelopes is a prize. It is a prize. None of them are bonkers, zonkers, whatever you want to call it. None of them are a whammy. That's what I was trying to think of. And then um, none of them are, uh, you have to buy something from me. No, it, none of it's like that. It is an actual prize. And the only trick, and I tell them there is a trick, the only trick to getting this prize is you have to book to look. So, I said, I'm gonna let you hold on to those envelopes. You just hold on to them the rest of the party, all right? And you think about it. I'm gonna ask you at the end, do you want a book to look? And you can say no and hand it right back to me, no hard feelings. Or you can say yes and look and see what your prize um, is gonna be just for booking a party. Um, and so, the key, the psychological key to this is that as they have their envelope and they're holding it the whole rest of the party, they're thinking about what's in it, they're rubbing their hands on it, they are falling in love with their envelope. And so it is very likely that they're gonna to want to see what's in it. Curiosity kills the cat. So, um, curiosity gets you a lot of free jam products. That's what it does. So, um, one of the bags will say gifts, uh, talk about gifts and how Jamberry makes, jam makes very great gifts. And I love to tell people about, like Jamberry has no expiration date. So you can stock up on these. They take up this much room in a drawer, very small, and you can just have them on hand. And anytime you have a surprise birthday party, well, surprise meaning like you got invited to it a month early and totally forgot until that day. I don't do that ever. Um, you can just stick some jams in the card and you look like you totally ordered these ahead of time. And it's such a cute gift. Um, Jam Juniors, I would stock up on the, I do stock up on those for little kid birthday parties. Um, Anyway, it's just perfect. If you just have somebody who's having a bad day or needs to get well or a happy or a secret sister or anything, these are amazing gifts to just, look, one stamp. Stick that card in the mail, one stamp, bam, you got it. So encourage them. I will have my guests sometimes stop at this point and write down as many names as they can in a 30-second period of people that they regularly buy guests for. So like daughters, aunts, grandmas, moms, anyone. Um, that they regularly buy gifts for, and that will get their head turning like, oh, so-and-so would like this. Um, kind of. Then I will do um, our left-right game. This is actually number seven in my bag. It's how we got started. And so how we got started means Jamberry. And so the left-right game is just a cute little poem that has a bunch of the word left in it and a bunch of the word right in it. And I actually give away a nail spoon. I'm sorry, Jamberry. This is not a Jamberry product. I, and I do not recommend giving away non-jam products, but all my guests always ask me about a nail spoon because I show them my nail spoon. I'm, I know that is such a bad thing to do, but I want them to have really good application and I believe in it. Um, so I ordered some nail spoons in bulk and so I will let them do the right left game with a nail spoon. You don't have to follow my lead. Um, so I will hand that and I actually will usually do two. I'll hand one on this side of the room and one on that side of the room. And basically, as I read this story, and guys, if you're on my team, Mail Fire and Gemination, this is in the file section. I'll read this story, and it talks about the three sisters and how they came up with the concept and why they chose to make it all natural, all this kind of stuff. And it has the word left and right in it a bunch. Every time they hear the word left, they pass it to the left. 
Every time they hear the word right, they pass it to the right, and the person who ends up with it at the very end gets to go home with it. So it's a fun break uh, in the information overload you're giving them to just win a prize and hear a fun story. And this is where we would get through all those bags, and this is where I would actually have us break for application. And this is when I would instruct all of my guests to come visit this station. If you have more than one, you can obviously let them spread out. But I would just instruct them, all right, girls, the key to Jamberry is um, to have great prep work. Really emphasize cleaning the nail. Um, if you love Dawn Dish Soap Method, this is the point when you would ask them to do that. Um, I do recommend using the Jamberry products. So um, clean with the cleanser. Buff or scuff up your nail bed just a little bit and then wipe with an alcohol wipe. And then I would send them, once you're done at that station, I would send them over to this station and I would say, all right, after I feel like everyone is done with the first prep, this is what we do next. And again, I am modeling this for them. Um, I would cut my nail wrap in half and I would heat it up with the mini heater and use the cuticle pusher to add pressure where I need it to really get it sealed down and then once it cools, I would either file the excess, and I show them how to file in a 90 degree angle, guys. I'm sorry, that's my hand, sorry. Um, in a 90 degree angle, straight down. Let me see if I can do this with like holding the camera and showing you at the same time. Probably not, oh yeah, look, ooh. So go straight down on your nails, straight down. Straight down, don't go up and down. You got a sippy cup there. Don't go up and down, just go straight down. Don't go side to side, you're gonna get raggedy edges. Just go straight down. That is like straight up Jamberry genius right there, vide videography. Um, all right, so after the nail wrap is cooled and they have filed off the excess or clipped off the excess, this is where I ask them to heat up the nail spoon in the mini heater and then basically iron those jams on one more good time to ensure they had a really good seal and enough heat. All right, at this point, everyone has their jam sample on and then I would invite them over here to use my lacquers. I would instruct them to use the base coat first, pick any of the colors they want. They can use a design dimension if they want to and then do a top coat. Um, and that way they leave here with a full manicure. Um, but then they're also doing the seven day challenge. So inform them, hey, look, I love our polishes and they're probably gonna last a lot better than your normal polish, but I, I want you to also compare to how well the jam holds up because Jamberry is, you know, the vinyl wraps. That's what we're plugging the most here, guys. Um, so anyway. Okay, so now we're at the ordering stage of your party. And so I like to hand out these little taggy things. Um, and I just say, hey girls, browse through the catalog. And I want you to just put one of these tags on every page that has a jam that you might like. It's not like you're going to buy it or anything. I just want to see kind of what your style is. And when I come over to help you place your order or book to look, um, then I can kind of see what you like and maybe even suggest things to you or coordinating wraps or anything. Just tag, 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 tag up your catalog. And so what this does is when I start going around to them, I can see this girl has her catalog all tagged up. She needs to host a party. So you say that to her, girl, we can get a lot of that for free. Do you want a book to look? Um, you know, and, and kind of let her know that way. Um, also, if they have their catalog all tagged up, you know, you can suggest, listen, you saw how easy it was for me to do this party. I saw how helpful you were when you walked in the door. You can help people <laughs> with their nail problems. You can help other women in this business. Your strengths are perfect for this you are going to be good at this. You know, let them know that you see something in them that they may not see in themselves. And then secondly, um, you have your catalog with a lot of tags in it. You could get a forever discount. You know, you could, you know, consider Jamberry and get 30% off every order plus more if you get your sales bonuses at the end of the month. So you should really think about that. And lastly, don't get your feelings hurt if they say no. If they say no, they don't want a book to look. No, they don't want to be a recruit. Um, they may still want to order. Probably to help out their hostess, they will, even if they don't. Guys, this is not personal. It's not personal. Just stop taking it personal. No is okay. No is your next step to the next yes. So keep asking. Um, and so you help them with their order and you move on to the next person, okay? And you go through all this with all of them and it's gonna seem like a little bit hectic and a little bit like, oh, I gotta get to the next one. But it's okay, because at the end of the party, it's you breathe and you say, oh, okay. 
I talk to everyone. And guess what? If you don't get to everyone, if somebody like just needs to leave before you can get to them, you have their contact info, right? You've collected those cards. Make sure you collect those cards. Um, and you can just reach out to them later. It's fine.